Pastor Troy this morning, and Pastor Mariah is stepping in for me, and she's down there with a team of people uh, setting up this site. And um, I just want to say this about our cleanup before we move to the message today. Really encourage you to carpool if you can. There's not a lot of parking down there because we've our farmer's market is under construction. We're meeting across the road from the farmer's market. Please carpool if you can. You can park downtown or you can park at the J.K. Irving Center. It's, it's not far of a walk at all from the site. Um, we're meeting at 11 o'clock. And usually after church, we're the type of people that we like to stay and talk, right? You know, talk to each other, have some laughs, not this week, no. Not loud. Kicking your right out. We have an armed security guard coming in at 11 to shut the place down. So if you're laughing, having too much fun, Joanne Bouchard is going to take care of you. She's armed with a key. Okay, it's ready to lock up. If you're here and you haven't signed up for the cleanup and you're like, you know what, I think I want to be involved in this, there's always room. There's always room for you to be involved. Question for us this morning. I'm going to start ask, by asking you, and then I'm going to ask myself the same question. Do you want to be like Jesus? Natasha, do you want to be like Jesus? And we hear this question, and, and we think, well, listen, we're in church, kind of surrounded by Christians, and so there's really only one answer to this question. I'm kind of forced to say yes. But even in your hearts, you're like, no, I mean this. Yes, I, I want to be like Jesus. I mean, we sing songs about this, right? To be like Jesus, to be. we maybe not sing that one anymore, but like there are songs all about how I, how you, how we want to be like Jesus. There's verses about this, and it's a question we need to ask ourselves many times throughout our life, at checkpoints. Do I want to be like Jesus? <coughs> Stop right there. In the middle of a tough decision. Do I want to be like Jesus? 1 John 2.6 tells us this. Whoever claims... 1 John 2.6 Whoever claims to live in him must walk as he did. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as he did. Then we have to ask ourselves, and remind ourselves, how did Jesus walk? How did he live? Now I'm sure many of us here today, we've asked ourselves this question, do I want to be like Jesus over time? You know, do, do, do I want to be like Jesus? Am I living my life like Jesus? This is, this is what Jesus was all about. Are you ready? He lived his life in humility. With forgiveness, he lived his life in servanthood, forever sacrificing and giving. He laid down his rights. He was abused. He was misused. Constantly leading people to the Father, walking in obedience even when he was tempted. He gave forgiveness freely with no strings attached to anyone who just asked for it or sinned against him. He suffered his time here on earth all the way to the cross. He was daily about his father's business. In a nutshell, that's, that's who Jesus is. And so I ask the question to us again this morning. Do we want to be like Jesus? Because when some of these things happen to me, I get upset. <coughs> Anybody else? You feel like you're misunderstood, misused, abused, mistreated. You're suffering. God, why me? I'm sure Pastor Troy's asked himself that a couple times. He just whispered it though because his throat's so dry. <laughs> God, why me? And we think about these things that happen in life, these unfortunate events, and we think, well, this can't be God. God, why me? I don't... Why should I have to suffer? Why should I have to be mistreated? Why should I have to be abused? And so, but the question is, do I want to be like Jesus? So I ask it again. 
do we want to be like Jesus? When while he walked here on earth, he just continuously laid it all down. That's all he did. He did nothing but sacrifice and give and walk in humility. He did nothing but those things. And too often we get, you know, too often we get caught up in the don'ts of serving Jesus. Well, I don't do this. And I don't do that. I don't, I don't commit adultery. I don't murder. You start with the big ones, right? Because most of us are. I don't, I don't lie. Just wait. I don't. I don't. You know. If we think of these, these don'ts. If I don't do this and I don't do that and I don't do this, then I'm serving Jesus. And, and the Bible, the message, one of the strongest messages through the Bible is, no, what do you do to serve Jesus? We get caught up in the don'ts and I think we need to get more caught up in the do's. We need to get caught up in the do's. What about the, the key things that Jesus did do. He, he, I mean, he was the very existence of these five things. He was, he was humble. He was sacrificial. He was giving. He was forgiving. You know, we're not followers of Jesus because of the things, the, just the things that we don't do. We are followers of Jesus because of the things that we do do. Do do. I said do do. I didn't mean to say do do. Jesus was a man of action. He was constantly um, doing things on, on behalf of his Father. And I'm not talking about just being busy. He was leading people to the Father. This is my mission here on earth, is to lead people to the Father. And so that's what I must be about doing. I'm not talking about filling our schedules up with stuff that will help us be busy or stuff that doesn't need to be done. I'm talking about walking and living like Jesus walked and lived. Do we really want to be like Jesus? Do we really want to be like Jesus? He was all of these things. He was misused. He was undertreated. He was abused. And you know, the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 11.2, it says, if you're waiting for the perfect time for no wind, no rain, no nothing to plant, you're never going to get anything done. Jesus, in the middle of the storms, in the middle of the bad times, he was there leading people to the Father. We need to count the costs. You know, we don't get, I don't get to do this or that, or, or not do this or that. If I, I really want to be like Jesus, you know, we must live a life of passion. I'm serious. I'm serious. Like, I honor you today. If you're wearing the 14th annual Youth Quake Cleanup t-shirt, and you've done this for 14 years. <laughs> I, I honor you today. And for, for those of us who just, you know, we're here, this is new, maybe first year, maybe second year, maybe third year, I honor you today for doing that. And we look at Jesus' life and he was filled with passion for everything that he did. Everything that he did. And that's what we get to do. We get to live a life filled with passion. You know, you don't have to, I will say this, all throughout the Bible, and specifically in the last book, Revelation, you know, talks about the return of Christ. And I believe that we are approaching the last days. <clears throat> Even if I'm wrong on that, I will say that we know we don't last live forever. <clears throat> so our days, our every day that happens, we are we are coming to a time where where it's um, it's getting more skimpy on the days we have left to lead people to Christ. We are headed towards all of this. All of this coming coming to an end. We think of end, we think, <gasps> but it's going to be an amazing day. Amen. It's going to be an amazing day. And we are headed towards this world coming to an end, the returning of Jesus for his church. And one of the signs of the times is the watered down truth. If anybody tells you that it's easy 
to be a Christian. If anybody tells you that it's easy to try to be like Jesus more and more every day, they're not telling you the truth. Because it's not easy. They're misguiding you. But I will say this, running from God, running from <coughs> Jesus, constantly ignoring the, 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 the guilt, constantly ignoring and, and pushing, pushing his presence away, that takes an awful lot of work too. And life itself just takes effort. And I think, why not? Why don't we put the effort in to be like Jesus? That's, if it takes work anyway. You know, this watered down truth, we live in this time where, where the truth is so watered down and we don't have to surf many TV channels, search far on the internet or Netflix to find somebody preaching the watered down truth. There's a TV evangelist right now talking about how, you know what, he's saying on second thought, confessing our sins to God is really not that important. And I'm like, wow, but I, but I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. And I don't get to say I want to be like Jesus except for asking for forgiveness. <laughs> Because that's the, who he was about. You know, it's hard work to live our lives with the intention, with the desire to become more and more like Jesus. There's, there's, there's no way around it. It is. It's, it's hard work. And if someone tells you different, I say this today. That we are never more like Jesus than when we are sacrificing and forgiving. We're never more like Jesus when we're serving and showing humility and giving. Never more like Jesus when we're walking in these five ways. And today, we get to do these things as a church. And I think that's a privilege. And today, you know, as a church, we walk in sacrifice and, and we serve, we help others with, with, with no promise of anything in return. We get to show humility by picking up garbage perhaps near the houses of people who you feel have mistreated you. We get to give of our time and energy and our resources. And we maybe even forget to give because uh, it's been a few years where people have thrown garbage at us while we're cleaning. So we may just have an opportunity to forgive. We get to do these five things. We get to walk and live like Jesus did today. And it's not very often we get to do this alongside, physically alongside so many people. I don't believe there's anything we do, and I said it earlier, that stamps our community with, with love like, like our cleanup. We get to mark our town with the love of Christ today. And it says this in Colossians, 3 verse 23. It says, put your heart and soul into every activity that you do as though you were doing it for the Lord himself. Put your heart and soul into acti every activity that you do. That's what the Bible tells me to do. Put my heart and soul into every activity as if I'm doing it for the Lord himself. Okay. We get to do that today and I think it's pretty amazing. We get to clean and serve our town and declare that Jesus is with us while we sacrifice, while we serve, while we show humility and give today. You know, he's gone before us and he's going to work through us. I want to be like Jesus. Yeah, I do. Do you want to be like Jesus? Doesn't mean if you're not wearing a green or orange shirt, you're not being like Jesus. I'm going to read this to you today. As we get this, this idea that, you know, I want to be like Jesus, but we, we show everybody, we show the world, like on social media and in real life, we show them like the highlight reels to our life. They don't see the behind the scenes stuff. And we know God sees the behind the scenes stuff, and so when we say things like, I want to be like Jesus, do you picture the highlight reel and then the behind the scenes sometimes? Anybody do that? No? Because both my hands are up, I do. 
When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not shouting, I'm clean living. I'm whispering, I was lost, now I'm found and forgiven. The author goes on to say this, when I say I'm a Christian, I don't speak of this with pride, I'm confessing that I stumble and I need Christ to be my God. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong, I'm professing that I am weak and I need his strength to carry on. When I say that I'm a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting that I've failed and I need God to clean my mess. When I say that I'm a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are far too visible. But God believes I am worth it. When I say I'm a Christian, I still need, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my share of heartache, so I call upon his name. When I say that I'm a Christian, I'm not holier than thou. I'm just a simple sinner who received God's grace somehow. <clears throat> Folks, God understands us. He loves us and he sees every side. He sees every side to your life. And his message is we don't I couldn't love you any more and I couldn't love you any less based upon I invite you to stand this morning. A very short message as we have a mission ahead of us today. We need to be the church outside of these walls. We get to turn this town upside down today uh, with the love of Christ. You know, Jesus didn't live his life by chance. He lived with intention, and, and he lived with purpose. And I believe the more intentional we are, I'm going to ask the group to come forward. I believe the more intentional we are living like Jesus did, the more our lives will begin to mirror his life. But we have to be intentional because something like that, as big as that, it just doesn't happen by chance. It just doesn't happen by chance. First John 2.6, I've read it a few times, whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Father, today teach us your ways. We humbly place ourselves at your feet, knowing, God, that, that while we try and we try to be intentional, we live our lives with, with purpose and we, and we try to follow your ways. We know, Father, that so many times we succeed and so many times we fail. But God, I thank you. We thank you for your word today that shows us how to be like your son. We thank you, Father, for the sacrifice of your Son, for the humility he showed. He gave everything. We thank you that he modeled these things for us today. And Father, as we go about this day and we we serve our community. We know we are serving you. And we thank you for this amazing privilege to be your hands and your feet today. We thank you for this amazing, amazing privilege to do this with so many of our brothers and sisters around us. God, you are so incredibly good. And today is a good day. We thank you. God, that through our actions, we get to show people a little bit of who you are today. Your love is endless and your mercy is endless. Your forgiveness and your grace and your servanthood, it's endless. We say these things in your name. Amen. So do you want to be like Jesus today? <laughs> want to be like Jesus today? Whether you're coming to the cleanup with us or not, just model Jesus today. Show the love of Christ today to people you find yourself around. We're going to do this. We're going to have a wonderful day. We're going to head, the group's going to close us off. We're going to head out, carpool all the way to the market. Hopefully you brought your lawn chairs.